Welcome to the American Lean Podcast. This is episode 14. And today we want to talk about 5G networks. The 5G networks will be the backbone of the key enablers for Industry 4.0. We'll learn more about 5G networks right after we get back from the intro. Welcome to the American Lean Podcast, where we cover five topics in five days in about five minutes. The only place in the world where you can get daily lean coaching. Your host is Tom Reed, and he shares his 30 years of experience and covers leadership, culture, entrepreneurship, lean methodologies, industry 4.0, and interviews special guests on their lean journey. We're glad you're here. So let's go. Welcome in to the American Lean Podcast, the backbone of Industry 4.0, 5G Networks. So as we talked about last week, I mentioned that there will be nine key enablers that support Industry 4.0 or smart manufacturing. One of the key elements that's going to be the backbone of those enablers, though, is going to be adoption of 5G internet speeds. Now, the term 5G is a very technical term. Not really. It just means fifth generation. But the advantages over the fourth generation LTE, which means long-term evolution, are going to be tremendous. But first, let's do a quick review of the Industry 4.0 enablers that 5G will support. So number one is cybersecurity and blockchain. Number two is cloud computing. The third enabler is IIoT, or the Industrial Internet of Things. The fourth enabler will be big data. The fifth enabler, system integration. The sixth enabler are autonomous robots, or cobots as they are called. The seventh enabler is additive manufacturing term we're more familiar with would be 3D printing. The eighth enabler is augmented reality. And the ninth enabler will be simulation and digital twins. All of these industry 4.0 enablers are going to require very fast network speed to be able to operate properly. So let's do a very quick introduction of 5G. The technology that drives 5G is based upon a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum called the millimeter spectrum. Think of these as very short wavelengths shorter than the current cellular waves, similar more to a microwave or visible light. The higher you go in frequency, the faster speeds you can achieve. Now, there will be some downfalls from those shorter wavelengths, but we'll talk about those later. So there are three elements that 5G hopes to solve. Number one being speed. This is an obvious advantage over the current network speeds. 5G is expected to be 10 to 100 times faster than the current LTE cellular networks. Let's say that you want to download an HD version of the latest Star Wars movie. Now that'll be about four gigabytes of data. If we were to do that on a four LTE network, that'd take about four minutes. On a 5G network, you can be watching R2-D2 in about three seconds. So that gives you a sense of how much faster a 5G network will be. Issue number two that 5G hopes to solve is density. This refers to how many people or devices that can be on a network at any given time. So imagine having sensors on all of your equipment that is sending real-time data across the network. You might have thousands of sensors sending data within your factory at the same time, and 5G will be able to support that density. 5G will have about 10 times more capability to handle connection data than current LTE networks. So I'm sure we've all been to a crowded sporting event or a concert. As you know, trying to get a signal is nearly impossible because of all the devices trying to access the network at the same time. 5G systems will be able to handle that density easily. And the third main issue that 5G networks hope to overcome is one called latency. Now, latency means information lag. 5G speeds should ensure that there's almost no delay in the information getting to you. So lag time should be in about the one millisecond range, which obviously is very, very small. About the time it takes for a camera flash on your phone when you're taking a selfie. The information being reported should be truly almost real time, not delayed by many seconds like we currently have. Now that's going to lead to tremendous opportunities outside of the factory walls as well. That latency or that lag is one of the main barriers that keeps cars from operating in a truly autonomous manner today. So that's just one example. What if you needed brain surgery, but you were in Colorado and the world's best brain surgeon was in Singapore? Without latency, he could control a robot from Singapore to successfully conduct your surgery in Colorado. That lack of latency is going to have tremendous impact on our lives moving forward. So this all sounds great, but there are a few drawbacks. One is because the millimeter waves are so short, they don't do real well with obstacles, and they also don't travel very far. 
While that might be a bigger problem for handling cellular phone demands, it should work well within a fixed environment such as a factory floor. Depending upon the size of your factory, you may have to put in several antennas, but the information that's captured and analyzed is going to be a tremendous use in understanding what's happening in the shop. 5G and its promise will ultimately be the backbone of the nine industry 4.0 enablers. So I hope this helped you learn a little bit about 5G networks. I'm not trying to make you an expert, but just realize consuming information is great, but I want you to take this information to make yourself and your company a little bit better today. This podcast is for you. So if there are topics that you would like me to cover, or if you'd like to share your company's lean journey, please contact me at tom at americalean.com. Until tomorrow, have a great one. Thank you for joining us today. As always, we're honored to serve you, and we hope that you and your company are getting a little bit better every day. Please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast, and share it with others in the lean and business community. If you'd like to turbocharge your lean efforts, please visit us at AmericanLean.com. 